Hi. Um, so, okay, right here. Oh, perfect. Great. Um, yeah, so that game was actually like a perf a really super perfect lead in to my talk, um, which is on, as you can see, comedy, games, and social change. Um, yes. So um, I'm Dietrich Squinkifer. Um, most people call me Squinky. Um, you can see my website and tweet at me if you want to um, or don't, whatever. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, oh, hey, that's how that works. Cool. Um, so yes. So when we think of like games for social change, um, games depicting difficult situations, we tend to think of them as kind of serious and humorless a lot of the time, which is for good reason, because, well, these are serious subjects. Um, being part of a marginalized identity or having a marginalized experience or going through something traumatic in your life, well, that is, those things are difficult. Those are, uh, and it does deserve to be taken seriously. But I also don't think that comedy and seriousness necessarily need to be mutually exclusive. Um, it's in a sense, it's more human to be able to laugh at the absurdity and silliness and complete like utter pointlessness and strangeness of your life when you are going something difficult or navigating in the world as uh, somebody who is not a like not privileged in some way or another. And uh, that makes your experience a lot more relatable to people. And also, one of the nice things about uh, humor is that it's really memorable. People will remember it. Um, if you laugh at something, um, then it's like, aha, that's funny. Oh, but wait, this is actually also really making me think. Whoa, <laughs> amazing. So yeah, I'm going to talk about a few game examples now um, of, uh, of games that I think like use a good combination of uh, comedy and social change. And some of it, some of them are my work um, and some of them are other people's work. So um, yes. The first game here is Interruption Junction. This is a game I made to uh, like, it's a game about being lonely in a group of people. So um, the diners at the table just hanging out um, are having this kind of procedurally generated conversation about nothing, just basically can, like gossip that is randomly generated about random people. It's not really going anywhere. The text is also scrolling really fast so you can't always read most of it. And then your player character is on the far right and you push a button to interrupt the conversation and, uh, and try to chime in. But like, if you push the button, you don't really participate in the conversation so much as you talk about like what your favorite video game was um, that you just played, and then everybody's listening, kind of being like, uh-huh, nice, whatever, nobody cares about what you have to talk about, and you don't really care what the other people have to talk about. Um, so when, if you don't say anything for a while, then you start to fade away. Um, <laughs> Likewise, if you keep on uh, talking and talking and talking, the other characters fade away. So it is like this really silly game with a funny soundtrack um, that I really enjoy doing. Um, I regret that I can't show you videos because time constraints and stuff, but, uh, but yes, definitely check it out. It is, um, yes, it is like funny and also really sad. So um, another game that I quite like is Coming Out Simulator 2014 by Nikki Case. Um, it's about coming out to your conservative Asian parents as bisexual. Um, and I, it's 
a very relatable experience for me in a lot of ways. Um, I definitely had a lot of feelings while playing it, but it's also quite a funny game, which uh, a lot of people don't necessarily point out. Um, it's got this very sarcastic like sense of humor in the dialogue, um, and uh, the situations you get into with your parents can be very, like, can be very exaggerated at times and uh and like there's even like some projectile vomiting um when uh, like when your mom asks you like who is the woman and then there's another great joke in there that it's like that's like saying that's like asking who's the chopstick and who's the spoon so yes yeah, so little little in jokes like that um like really poking fun at like uh, kind of like this asian canadian upbringing and having to navigate that difficult space of uh, of cultural differences um so i thought that was really beautiful um, here's another game I wrote um, called Queen's Quest VII, The Death of Video Games. It is a twine piece that uh, I wrote in response to Gamergate, which had just kind of started. Um, and so it's basically like this very, very glittery satire of uh, like, there's, there's this story of, um, of you being like um, on, on a spacecraft with uh, with your um, like with your first mate and uh, and your home planet has been taken over by the misogynists and and then this scene is where they're arresting you um, and so yes it's very very silly and that was my way of dealing with uh, this really traumatic event that was happening in my community um, and. Uh, and you end where everything explodes in a pile of glitter. And so that was, uh, that was kind of my way of venting my frustrations uh, through a game and, uh, and dealing with something horrible that had happened. I was inspired in part by Porpentine's game Crystal Warrior Kesha, which is uh, also like a similar power fant glittery power fantasy kind of thing where you play as, uh, as Kesha during a concert and, uh, and then you destroy everything. Um, so yes, also, also a, great, a, a great, very funny game, but the, power the queer power fantasy. Um, here's another game I made called Fitzwilliam Darcy's Dance Challenge, uh, par poking fun of gender roles and, and basically like Jane Austen Regency England style, like constraining constraints. So um, this is like a Dance Dance Revolution clone that is actually very, very difficult to play. So uh, it is very, very hard uh, to figure out what's going on. All the uh, arrows are kind of going too fast. And so you have to do these dance moves on, uh, on a dance mat. And then in the meantime, Mr. Darcy is dancing with you and, and, and then he is insulting you the entire time. <laughs> So, um, so yes, procedurally generated dialogue there. Um, he speaks in this really creepy text-to-speech voice. Um, so, yes, uh, it is uh, like definitely this uncomfortably hilarious game to play, and in a sense, like the only way to really win is either not to play or step on his foot a whole bunch. So uh, this game is Perfect Woman. It is uh, another like really interesting game about bodies and contorting yourself to fit a particular feminine ideal. I, I quite like it a lot. It is also one of those games you really have to play to understand how hard it is. And also like a game that is not really so much meant to be won as it is to make a fool of yourself really awkwardly and, uh, and kind of like feel empathy for uh, these, uh, these very like rigid roles that women are put in. This is Realistic Kissing Simulator. Um, I like it because uh, it's a game about consent that is also really, really silly. So uh, you start out, one of the players says, would you like to kiss me? And the other one gets to respond with no or yes. 
and then kissing ensues. <laughs> Yes, this is exactly what kissing is like, and uh, and I love it. <laughs> it's a, it's like so. It's this very very awkward thing with tongues gnashing and lashing about, uh, and uh, and so it is really like poking fun at kind of the absurdity of intimacy, and it's and uh, and silliness, and uh, and I quite love it. A similar game is Groin Gravitators which uh, has uh, an interesting commentary on masculinity and touch. Uh, so you play as Peter Molyneux and David Bowie about to give each other a hug. <laughs> and so uh, you need to get your groins as close as possible without touching or else that would be awkward. Um, so you're playing this. So you're playing this game. It's a two-player game, and you have to like move and uh, and uh, avoid these obstacles. And so it's just this. I just found it to be this really like fascinating like commentary on how like on uh, like I don't know how especially how men especially in our culture like um, tend to like feel about like touching other men and uh, and like whether that makes them gay or not and uh, and and just this kind of uh, this like real awkwardness surrounding it. Um, Consentical is another game that I quite like by Naomi Clark. Um, it is um, another game about negotiating consent um, and, uh, and involves like um, a human and, uh, and a tentacle monster having a, uh, a consensual encounter um, and then uh, matching up various tokens and, such, and cards and such uh, to have a satisfying experience. It's really, really hard to play without like completely giggling um, because like um, you wind up kind of like communicating in this very, very silly way and uh, it's hilarious to passersby. And I mentioned this game because it inspired me to create another game called Tentacles Growing Everywhere because um, if you think of alien sex, um, like I was like, there should also be like a game about alien puberty and how awkward that would be. Um, so, so I wrote this story about um, like an alternate uh, like alien society where puberty happens at uh, like where every, uh, every child looks about the same until age 13 when their bodies so suddenly start to grow in some random way. And then that determines your role in society. So it's poking interesting fun at, uh, at gender roles and like what happens if you grow up without them and then suddenly have them thrust upon you and what that does to your friendships and to how you think of yourself. Um, so uh, yes, it's these uh, three friends who write to each other in their like in their online journals. Um, there is also a uh, like a satire of a puberty book that I insert here and there in the game. So um, it's just like this really, really like um, this this really like kind of um, irritatingly out of touch adult talking about like, hey, here's what happens when you go through puberty and describes it in like these very normative ways. Um, so <laughs> that, um, so I had some fun with that. Yes, anyway, that is all I have for you for now. Um, feel free to uh, ask me any questions. If you run into me here and there, um, contact me online and have a good rest of your conference. Thank you. Thank you.